So guys, today we're going to be doing the holdovers. Um, the holdovers came out in 2023, last year, basically. Uh, it starts Paul Giamatti. was directed by Alexander Payne. Um, and it also has Dominic Sisa. I hope I'm not butchering the person's name. And it has Divine John Randolph. Uh, pardon? I think it's Joy. They say John. I heard John. No, no, Joy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, it 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 has a running time of one thirty three minutes, and it it made thirty nine point nine million at the box office. Um, and the film received five nominations at the ninety sixth. 96th Academy Awards, eh? including Best Picture. So that is pretty cool, actually. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I was doing research. Fun fact: uh, apparently, this guy, the director, has actually um, every time he gets a nomination, Scorsese he gets a nomination for Best Picture at the same time. So is that bad luck? Is that to go up against Scorsese like every single time he's gotten a Best Picture nomination? Mm. So is that bad luck? Going up against a legend. So yeah, he hasn't had a chance to win one yet, as far as I know. The director. The the director doesn't have a, an, an award at all. No, no, a best picture. As in oh, a best picture. Oh, yeah. okay. So he keeps going up against, you know, Scorsese. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah, that's but, bad luck. I've never heard of him, but when I'm looking at his work, I realize that he was he did The Descendants. Yeah, and Sideways, which got nominated for best picture, which is funny because I never all of these movies. Are movies I know, but I've never actually watched. I think the only one, yeah, me too, because I know about Schmidt. Yep. I was supposed to watch about Schmidt, but I've never watched it. Yep. Sideways, Downsizing, The Savages. These are all things that when you watch a clip or someone talks about something, you know them. Do you know what I mean? Well, The Savages that I'm aware of is the one with, that was directed by uh, Oliver Stone. Uh, Sorry, exactly the producer for that one. I've got my stuff mixed up here. But yeah. Downsizing? Uh, no, I don't know downsizing. The one with Mark Wahlberg where he shrinks. No, it's Matt Damon. Matt Damon, sorry, yeah. It's, um, yeah, again, I know a lot about it, but yeah, I've never yeah. actually watched it. I know, I know Matt Damon and Mark Wahlberg look alike, so I, I get you, I get you. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think we need to review this guy's movies, because... Yeah. Those, are, those are really good movies. I mean, he did Election in 1999. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I think we definitely need to check out this guy and see what he's about. Eh? Check yeah. out this stuff. I think we might fall in love with this work, actually. Yeah, like um, Nancy Myers person, yeah. Pardon? Yeah, just like Nancy Myers, definitely. Because um, it says that... Uh, he won. It says Payne twice won the Academy Award best for best adapted screenplay for co-writing his directorial Sideways and The Descendants. Mm-hmm. So he's pretty good. Then he's pretty good. Good, uh, right? Yeah. So yeah, going back to the cast, uh, we have Paul Giamatti. Awesome. Um, and honestly, for me, this guy is one of the best. <laughs> Actors that we have, yeah, yes. um, I think he's underrated. I think he's an actor's actor. Yeah, the Kobe uh, actors. Yeah, I, I, sure. Let me just mention some of the movies that uh, I've loved him in. I've loved him in uh, Big Fat Liar. Remember, he was blue. <laughs> he was also in Big Mama's House, the first one, if you remember correctly. Yeah, of course. Um, he was in. Um, he was in Saving Private, Saving Private, Private Ryan. Um, if you remember that as well, he was also in Saving Mr. Banks. He was also in. Um, Shoot 'em up is a big one for me. Oh yeah, he was the villain, wasn't he? Yes, he was a big villain. Yes. And he was also in. Uh, you remember he was in The Hangover. Yes, I just remember one as again. Was it the second one or the third? He was a villain, I think. Couldn't have been the, f- the third one then, because that was um, the guy from Community. Um, they must have been in the first one then. 
Yeah. Uh, he, was, he was also in straight straight out of Compton. Yes, that's probably that's probably one of the like the deepest role I've ever seen him in is probably straight out of Compton, man. Yeah, same here. Same here. That one hit me in the chest. That was so good. He's really versatile, eh? Oh, yeah, definitely. Dude, this guy can make you laugh so hard that your stomach hurts. And he can be so serious that you just want everybody to shush in the room because you want to hear every word that's going to come out of his mouth. Oh, definitely. And then I don't know, he's, he's, he kind of sounds the same in terms of like how he speaks. I don't know. There are certain things that a guy needs to do out there. and But at the same time, his range makes you just yeah. forget that he sounds the same. You know like what I mean? We talked about the other week, um, the Jack Richard guy. Um, oh, um... It's not about doing different Jack, voices. Jack Ryan. Yeah, it's not about doing different voices. It's about how you do that one voice different ways. Right. Create different contexts. Wow, John Kaczynski. Yeah. Same. Yeah. It's all about how you do the same voice in different ways. I mean, in, in different contexts. And it mm. becomes completely different. I mean, he's a scientist in, in, in what's it? He makes a great scientist in that movie, um, San Andreas. Um, that little bit he's in, you know, and they're interviewing him. And it's like... It was so good. You even seen the trailer. It's like, what's it called? Silent dress. San Andreas. What is the rock? I don't know it. You don't know the one where the rock is an airplane pilot or whatever, a helicopter rescue person, and then there's an earthquake that basically sinks all of California, basically. Yeah. Never seen oh. it. Never even heard of it. Am no. I really losing you? Okay. <laughs> no, I don't know it. Definitely there. Um. Yeah. He was in billions, obviously. Yeah. Um, it was also in too, too Big to Fail. Loved his role in Too Big to Fail. Brilliant. Um, and he was in Planet, Planet of the Apes. Yes. Yes, he was. He was the orangutan, I believe. No, um, the, what do they call those big ones again? I think no, I think it's an orangutan, yes. Uh, oh, he was an orangutan, not a gorilla. Well, I mean, they're all gorillas, but I mean, like, you know the one with the long arms. He plays as. Have you watched Planet of the Apes? No, no, no I get the. I get what you mean by orangutan. Yeah. I haven't watched the. You're talking about the one by. Oh, who directed cool. it again? Matt Damon, whichever one. Huh? That was no. That was Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> That's Mark Wahlberg. That was Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> whichever one. Yes, <laughs> that one. That one had Paul Giamatti in it and Halle Berry, I believe. Halle Berry. I could be wrong, but I'm 60% sure that Halle Berry in it as the beautiful monkey. Actually, I don't know. Actually, no, Halle man. Halle Berry. Wasn't that, like, um, wasn't that, um, mistaking it, aren't I? It's Tim Burton's ex wife. What's her name? Again? I don't think it was Bottom Carter, was it? It was. Hel- Helena Bo- Boham Carter. The, she was the, the beautiful ape, wasn't she? I think she was, maybe. The female ape. Yeah. Yeah. Um, ah. I might be wrong about that one. Uh, it happens, bro. Yeah. And then uh, we have... What's this kid's name again? Dominic Ceci? Cesar. Dominic Cesar. Cesar works for me. Um, um, but I don't see any movies here. Yeah, I only see... Wait, let's see. I think this is it. Yeah, I think this is probably his. I don't know if it's his debut, but definitely his mainstream debut. Yeah, definitely his. De- hey, bro, and the, the nominations that he's got, bro, for this movie. Makes sense. He was really good. Yeah, he was. He was really you know, good. Um, actors like him remind me of people like Robert De Niro. I remember watching a video about Robert De Niro a long time ago where he was talking about, like, he was giving acting advice, and he said that. For him, his method is he's not trying too hard to be someone else. He just tries too hard. He just he just he's just in the moment, and his reaction is just him reacting to something, not trying too hard to react in a different way. No, no, he just reacts the way he would normally react if he's reacting to something. That makes sense. So I feel like this kid, in his authenticity, yeah, that's what uh, brought this his character to life. That's what made, made sold us to his acting. Hmm. And then you have Divine Joy Randolph. What a beautiful woman, man. 
She was in Office Christmas Party. You remember that movie? I think it's a it's a comedy. I believe no, I don't know that one. Is that the one with it's, Seth Rogen? I think it's Jason Bateman. Okay, different one then. Okay, that was mine. Then I know a lot of Office Party movies. Um, mm. Even Jennifer Aniston is in it. Really? And then, yeah. Maybe we should review it because I was actually thinking about the other one with Seth Rogen. I was thinking about it earlier on that we should review it with Joseph, Joseph Gordon Lewitt, Lewitt, uh, Seth Rogen, and uh, Anthony Mackie. Okay. I'm not, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that one. Uh-uh. So that's one. Yeah, and then uh, TV wise, he was in Empire, High Fidelity. Um, I see a lot of TV stuff here, definitely. This is us, yeah. She was also in Dolomite is my name. You know, you remember the one with Eddie Murphy and... Um, not Will Smith, Will Smith Snipes, yes. Will Smith Snipes, yes, yes. Yeah. Wow, she's 37 years old. No, she... Is she? Yeah. Damn. She was born in uh, 86. God damn, she's older than me by a year, damn. Yeah. Who would have thought? Not me. Maybe it's because of this role, but I think in other roles she plays a pretty young mm. person. Yeah. So those those are basically the three main characters of this movie. Oh, yeah, that's the whole. That's the main cast, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I do know the other kids. I mean, I just don't know their names, but. Um, the other guy seems familiar. Oh, there's also Kerry Pre- 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 uh, Preston. I love that lady, man. Especially her role in The Good Wife. She's the one that brings uh, Paul Giamatti cookies in the beginning. Yes, I know. Yes, yeah, I know. man. I love her. I yeah. love her, love her, love her, love her. Especially in The Good Wife, dog. That role that she plays in The Good Wife. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Apparently, she had a bigger role in True Blood, though. That's amazing. That's interesting. I wonder. She was in True, True Blood. Yeah, in 81 episodes. Damn! Oh, in The Good Wife, she's only in 14 episodes, so she was huge in this one. No, I'm drawing a blank as to... Dude, those two, those 18 episodes we're talking about, she was phenomenal, though. That's the thing I liked about The Good Wife. The Good Wife, for me, I always felt like the supporting characters Mm -hmm. eclipsed, some of them, they eclipsed even the main character. That's how good they were. That's good. It was the first time I saw writing like that, where it seemed like the supporting characters are the ones that are actually carrying the the story, even though the story is about the main character. And the main character's story is also heavy, and she's carrying it, if that makes sense. (laughs) Yeah, in its own way, yeah, it does. Yeah, you know, like when you're watching... I'll give an example, American Pie. I've also seen the same writing in American Pie, where Jason Biggs, you know it's about him and his friends, and you know his friends are also main characters. And they also have their own subplots, like Oz. You know, you know that Oz also has like a huge subplot. Kevin as well has a huge subplot. But at the same time, you're like, wow. I love all of these guys, but I know the main character is this particular person, or the central character is this particular person. Yeah, it's something like that. Everyone's in business for themselves in their own way, yeah. Exactly, bro. They're not just the plot device. They're, they're, they're yeah. really in the, yeah. She's right. also- something to do yeah she was also the sequel of the good wife called the good uh fight uh and she was also in a uh, person of interest oh yeah these are all things i never saw <laughs> yeah oh really i only saw the good wife yeah nah d none of the above except for true blood but then again that was a long time ago with anna Paquin, right yeah and she was in all episodes. That's why I'm like, I'm stressed. I'm like, I know, I'm sure I know her. I just can't. I have to, if I watch just one episode, I'll see her. But mm. she was in as many episodes as all the main characters. So she's the main character. Oh, so she's the main character. Yeah. Oh. Not the main character. A main character. Like yeah, A, a yes. Uh, wasn't the main character uh, Anna Paquin? Yes. Yeah. Exactly right. Okay. So, yeah, that's basically the cast, guys. Um... There's not much to say here. I think the only the star uh, actor here is Paul Giamatti, and I've already said uh, uh, some stuff about him. It's unfortunate that we didn't really get to see his role as a rhino in uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2. 
because ah, dude, like you could see some of these scenes were definitely cut out. <laughs> that was, yeah, I don't know why people like Amazing Spider-Man. I assume it's because of um, and the, Garfield, yes. Yeah. But like Garfield looks so good, we're okay with that movie. <laughs> yeah. Look, for me, I would say Amazing Spider-Man two. has two. Yeah. It has two very attractive human beings, you know. <laughs> yeah, Emma Stone and handsome guy and this extremely beautiful woman. Emma so. Stone, Jamie Fox, yes. I don't know if I told you this before, but I feel like, and I don't know if it was deliberate, but I feel like people who are actually redheads play blondes in Spider-Man movies, and then people who are actually blondes play redheads in Spider-Man. I'll give an example. Um, you're gonna say Toby, um, Toby Maguire, Spider-Man. Um, oh, no, the, the 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 love interests. What's the name again? The the the, the first Spider-Man film. What's the name? That Jane, Jane, um, played by. Oh, I'm ashamed of myself. Kirsten Dunst. Oh, I'm also ashamed of myself. I love that woman too. Yeah, Chris, Kirsten Dunst. Oh, Kirsten right. Dunst is actually a blonde, right? Yes, but, I do. but she plays a redhead. Which is funny because um, a lot of red, a lot of blondes will play redheads because it makes them stand out. For example, um, Man of Steel, um, Lois Lane, Amy Adams. Amy Adams, she dyes her hair red. She's not actually redhead. She dyes her hair red regularly because when she dyed her hair, she says when she dyed her red red, she got more roles because she stood out more. Oh, as being that's star. the same thing with Margot Robbie because Margot Robbie is actually a brunette, but. Um, when she dyed her hair blonde, she started getting roles. <laughs> Since she looks like a Barbie, like yeah. she is one of the most. She's wolf. She's the Wolverine of casting. Like you know what I mean? How Hugh yeah. Jackman was a perfect Wolverine. Yeah. She was the perfect Barbie. Like that 100%. is. Percent. No one could have copied that. You know, I think the other one who was supposed to take that role. Well, I think there were a few other people, but I think one of the people was uh, Blake Lively. Um, I know Blake Lively. Her name rings a bell, but. The answer's already uh, known. <laughs> it's uh, uh, Ron Reynolds' wife. Oh, no. No. I like Blake Lively, but no. But not as a Barbie, right? Like she's, she... How do I put it to you? Some people look small, some people look big, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like, um, Jason Bateman looks small. Like he, look, he looks like you could take him in a fight. Like, you know what I mean? Okay. Like he looks small, and then like Henry Cavill, even if he wasn't big, he'd still look big. Like if that makes any sense. Like you got a big face, you got a big look to you. You know what I mean? Like a big oh. energy to you. I feel like what's her face? Barbie is a big character, and I feel like Blake Lively is beautiful, but I don't think she could handle the bigness of being Barbie. Do you know what I mean? Like visually. Do you think she's an A-list actress? Yeah. The only problem is I don't think I know her in enough things to be like, oh yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's why I'm asking because so I do know that she was in um what's that Axel so Yes. And that was and that, big. That was huge. But at the same time, it's not that was TV, right? Yeah. But then she also did Age of Adeline. Mm-hmm. And she was in Savages and she was in Green Lantern. Which is another thing that I wanted to talk about. Like, have you noticed that a Hollywood couple, for them to get married, they have to do like a, a horrible movie first. Like they have to do something together. Yes. <laughs> like they have to do a movie that bombs. Yeah. Look at Ben Affleck and um, Jennifer Garner. They did Daredevil and they got married, right? Makes sense. Uh, Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt did Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Nobody talks about it yeah. anymore. But uh, Jennifer Aniston yeah. still thinks about it. But who? Jennifer, Jennifer Aniston still thinks about it. Wow, dude, we have both of Jeez. And then, uh, who's the other one that I'm thinking about? I was thinking about just now. Directors, aren't you? The old Underworld and um, Resident Evil. Though those aren't two actors, but still, they fell in love on a terrible movie. Um, <laughs> yeah. Even Blake, yeah, Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds, uh, they did Green Lantern and it bombed, but they yep. got married. But then again, do you even remember Blake Lively and Green in, like even like, if you say now, I'm like, what was she doing there? Like, what what was her role again? Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And she was, if I remember correctly, she was like the boss's daughter. She was a part of the experimentation. 
Yeah. 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 Carol, Carol Ferris or something that wrote. Yeah, dude, I just remember. I remember. I remember not remembering her. <laughs> enough. <laughs> but just to carry on with my thought, Bryce Dallas Howard is a redhead, uh -huh. beautiful woman. Absolutely. She's the first Gwen Stacy, and she was a blonde in there. Oh. Yeah, and then uh, they also had Charlene Woodley. You remember Charlene Woodley from Divergent? Yes. I don't think she's a redhead, but she was meant to play uh, Mary Jane Watson. It's just that her scenes were cut out. So it's like there's a thing, man. There's an unwritten rule that blondes are supposed to play red redheads and redheads are supposed to play blondes. It's weird. It's something that I just noticed. I don't know if it's deliberate or not. But you see, look at look at look at her already. I feel like that's already proving a point. I feel like she didn't have the X factor to carry the Divergent series. Like I feel like to carry what? The like um, Shailene Woodley. Like I feel like she didn't stand out. Now to be fair, the the Divergent series wasn't that good in the first place. One can argue that. But at the same time, I feel like she didn't have the X factor to carry. I think it. she was. I mean, dude, have you watched The Fault in Our Stars? Yes, of course I have. I I see how amazing she is in that movie. But it's not an action movie. It's not an action drama. It's not a blockbuster. Oh, is that what you're saying? Like, maybe she wasn't good at action. Yeah, the whole blockbuster thing. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I don't know. I guess it depends. Yeah, like how you were saying, maybe the Divergent movies are not really good from the beginning. I don't think that's the case. I think the, the idea is good. Maybe the execution. Because you could say the same about Hunger Games. Is it that with Hunger Games? Mm -hmm. Um, Jennifer Ga Jennifer, ugh, man, Jennifer Lawrence. Yes. Um, I mean, especially the first. For me, the best, the, the um, the, the the best Hunger Games movie is the first one, in my opinion. And for me, it was in moments of silence that I was captivated by Jennifer Lawrence. You know, <laughs> whether she's hunting something or she's planning something. Yes. So she she, she, she didn't really scenes. And in a big way, like Margot Robbie sells every scene in a big way. Look at Focus. Right. She sells every scene. Margot Robbie is a massive actor. I'm not. I don't know. Explain to you. Like, there's an X factor that Margot Robbie has. I, think I get what you're saying. And uh, Jennifer uh, Lawrence has an X factor as well. Look at Silver Linings thing. Look at, look at. um, Gosh, there's so many. Amy <laughs> Adams technically should have it. I have a feeling because <laughs> she's pretty good in Amy Adams. I feel that she kind of has it. No, no, she has it. Amy Adams has it. Definitely. Sure. I mean, she stood out so well in um, the fighter, in um, Superman, in Man of Steel. They yes. basically gave her the whole extended edition of Man of Steel. They were like, "Yo, man, we cut out your storyline, we put it back in. Now it's a little bit better now." Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever saw the extended edition of Man of Steel. No. Basically, in the extended edition of Man of Steel, what they do is they, because you know, like in Lois Lane, you can see that she's doing an investigation, but then mm -hmm. she kind of disappears for half the movie, then comes back. Yes. Yeah, that part where she disappears, it's a whole investigation that goes into why was Superman showing, why was she showing up in the middle of Africa? You know what I mean? And why were oh. they faking that whole situation with Lex Luthor? Mm -hmm. That's the, there's an investigation as to figure out why that's happening. And Wait, they, that's not Man of Steel, that's... Uh... Oh, sorry, I'm wrong, my, my mistake, not Man of Steel. Oh, ba Batman v Superman, yeah, I've seen the extended version. Yes, then yes, so you know then. When they put all that in, it's her. They put a lot of her in. And I feel like yeah. it makes experience. It makes it a better movie. It makes yeah, it a better yeah. movie, in my opinion. Well, she's uh, investigating the bullet and stuff. Yes, exactly. I remember it's that. A much better movie. Because yeah. she's got that factor. Margot Robbie's got that factor to her. No, I, I think I get what you're saying. I mean, Tom Cruise has it. Tony Depp has it. Brad Pitt has it. Leonardo DiCaprio has it. Um, like, even if they do a horrible movie, you still feel like... I mean, it was not that bad because yeah. Tom Cruise is in it, you know? And, yeah, there's also this one factor that comes in. Is when Even when you, like, I always want to call it a strange factor, where you look unique. In the same way, like, a musician will sound unique. Like, for example, Chris Rock sounds unique. Yes. Or um, the guy from... Uh, I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, the singer from... Um, God, tonight... We are young. Yeah, I remember that girl. Wasn't it like kids? No. Huh? What? The girl from Fun. Is it Fun? Fun. Or? Fun. Um, that guy, he's got such a unique voice that when he sings stuff, it's just uh, Nate Russo, right? 
he's got such a standout voice that when he sings, like, oh, it's him. Do you know what I mean? He, mm-hmm. And he someone else's song, and I swear to God, it sounded so unique. So Blake Lively doesn't have that. I feel like she doesn't. Huh. But now the question is, maybe she hasn't given a chance. But then again, I feel like you don't have to be in a good movie to stand out. Look at, have you seen the other guys? Yes, I have. It's one of the corniest movies of all time, but everyone is That's so good at it. the funniest movies of all time. <laughs> it's, it's so good. <laughs> it's one of the funniest movies I've ever seen in my life. Like, I don't know how to explain it to you, where it's like, you can put some people in anything and they become good. If, if, like Jay Jekyll, you can put him in anything. He's got that unique factor. Michael Keaton. Is that what you said? Well, the guy was in was in the other guys as a captain, but he yes, was Michael at, Keaton, at, yes. beyond. <laughs> those scrubs. That's another TLC lyrics. Dog, he had so many TLC references in that movie. <laughs> 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 One of the funniest scenes for me is when they were attending a funeral and uh, Damon's kid was fighting with, I think he was fighting with Mark Wahlberg or something. And uh, he's busy chastising them, but whispering, hey, what are you talking? Are you crazy? You want to <laughs> <laughs> yes! And, uh, on Facebook, someone was put a clip of it on Facebook, actually. That's what made me remember the movie. So I put a clip on it, they're all fighting on the ground. And then, yeah. do you know, like, you see, those are all, like, there's, this, there's an X factor, and there's, like, a unique factor. To me, you get the mainstream actors like Margot Robbie and them, they've got the X Factor. You get like these unique actors like, here's someone who can carry a movie as well. Michael Sarah can carry a movie because he has Bro, a unique factor. He did, he did Scott, Pil- Scott Pilgrim <laughs> and he was killed. incredible. He killed it. He killed it. He wasn't super bad and he killed oh, it. And he killed it. But he isn't as funny. See, that's directed by um, one of the best directors of our time. Um, um, we always forget his name. We do this. this like Jada Patel. Jada Patel. Jada Patel. No. Scott Pilgrim. It's not oh, Jada Patel. right. Um, I, th- I thought we were talking about Superbad. Um, uh, 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 Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright, yes. Now, Baby Driver was a fantastic movie, but I couldn't pick out the lead actor out of a lineup. <laughs> I couldn't pick the lead actor out of a lineup. Really? I don't know. I think this is where you and I disagree about. Because <laughs> what's his name again? In, he was name? also in the fault in our thoughts. He was bad. I didn't say he was bad. But I get you. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm but not disagreeing with you about being bad. I'm just disagreeing with you about the X factor. Because that kid in uh, the fault in our stars. Great. Okay. Is he the kid from the fault in the stars? Yeah. And he was and also in the. Funny. I mentioned okay. two kids in the Fault in the Stars that I didn't <laughs> like. I mentioned both leads. <laughs> in, in, Divergent, in Divergent, he was the little brother. Oh, really? Yeah. See what I mean? Oh, come on, dude. Like, think about Gary Oldman. What a. That, have you seen him in um, True Lies? Is it True Lies where he plays like this weird Rastafarian gangster, white guy? He wasn't True Lies? It's, oh, fuck. Uh, it's like a weird movie. Like one of his early movies. Like Gary Oldman is an X Factor in my opinion. Like that man is amazing in everything. Oh, he does. He does. And he's not just amazing in everything, but he stands out in everything. Yeah, no, I get what you mean. I don't know, man. I gen- okay. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just uh, biased because I find, I find Charlene Woodley extremely attractive. Maybe that's why I'm biased. Oh, she but, is. She is. She's but I felt for I felt I f- like I loved her character in in Divergent and I loved her character in The Fault in Our Stars. But that's just me. Yeah, but come on, look at it like this: if they put her opposite Will Smith in Hancock instead of Charlize Theron, who of course has the X factor, who absolutely has the factor, um, would it have been the same movie? Remember we had this discussion with with, with what's it Samuel Jackson and Denzel Washington mm. her in Hancock. Do you know? Do you know who who Shalene Woodley reminds me of? Who? She reminds me of Lindsay Lohan. Ah, there's wasted potential right there, Lindsay Lohan. Mean that's, Girls. That's what she reminds me of. She reminds me of Lindsay Lohan. She, it, for me, I feel like she's like kind of like how I think I told you this before. How I feel like Anne Hathaway is yep. like a reincarnation of Julia Roberts. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no, I, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say reincarnation because Julia Roberts is still with us, but. I feel like she's like a glitch in the system where someone wrote the same code 
Mm-hmm. But then just made her a brunette and they said, yeah, this is another way. <laughs> I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. I kind of disagree for me. 